Greetings and welcome to TFT Tarot for Today, Divine Dabblings with Oberon and Banshee. This is me, Oberon, with Goth Tarot. It's a look into the dark side, issues, philosophies, underpinnings, things that we don't know about or things that we don't know how to handle. So our standard reading, of course, with the usual several cards from several decks, starting once again with the dark design from the Murder of Crows Tarot. And this is about really um, what's around us right now. What is around us? And you know, just to get a little personal, I realize we have just moved into Mercury retrograde. But in general, there seems to be a lot of forces around us that are causing various things to happen. Some of them do appear to be astrological forces, the various other retrogrades and planet configurations. It's really a, a mess out there. And I think <clears throat> the culture worldwide kind of is moving along through various inconsistent approaches to just about everything. Yeah, I know I'm being kind of vague here, but everything seems to be weird. And I know that's the new popular word right now. So let's find out what that dark design is and maybe how it affects us. All right, and that card. It's the reversed Eight of Swords. <clears throat> The reversed Eight of Swords. Well, as a dark design, this maybe indicates that we are moving out of illusions. We are sort of realizing that things that maybe seem to confine us or hold us back aren't real. I can see many metaphors in the culture and the world, but this has got to apply for us personally in our own lives too and so for you gentle viewer you may be realizing right now that things that you felt were protecting you were not protecting you and i use that analogy because of course traditionally the eight of swords feels like somebody is being contained contained from being harmed or doing harm maybe a little bit of both so I suggest that this is saying, watch where you go regardless of anything else if you are being released. And I want to pull the additional uh, cards from the Murder of Crows, um, the ones that indicate how this is actually affecting us. Is, is the change more about something that's physical? You know, a condition changes and physically you're free? Or is it more about inside of us? And I have picked the Crow Mother. <clears throat> and that means this is an emotional freedom. This is releasing ourselves maybe from precepts and concepts and aspects that uh, limited us. And now we are finding a way to break through that. Yet there still seems to be things going on that maybe are, are hard for us to, to reason with. And so I'm thinking there's still an influence that maybe comes from beyond human life. I don't know if it's just purely the magic, the spirit world, the ancestors. But I'm going to pull a card from the Ghost Tarot because I want to see if that can tell us if this influence that maybe causes this or that possibly gives us a reason to understand why or how it's happening is actually coming from outside in a way. And so I don't think I mean outside in the way that it's another person 
maybe affecting us. I really think it's something sort of more different. Spirit even. And of course, <clears throat> I've pulled the Six of Cups. So let me say this. There is some tug or pull from beyond, even if it's only the sense of memory, the kind of memories that um, seem to be holding us to an illusion, to an idea that something isn't the way it should be. So I think that that's what we need to focus on is realizing that maybe the influence that's coming to us that held us there or that maybe we'll continue to try working on that is a memory more than anything. It could be a memory that's sort of um, shown through the past in a way. All right, so we need to know more then about all of this. We need to know what is actually causing all this perhaps I'm going to have a card for the solution, trust me. But so now I'm going to move to the Deviant Moon Tarot. And this is about maybe a dark vision that we don't have, but that we need to find. You know, the moon sheds its light on things, and sometimes those things end up being more clear, but sometimes they don't. So let's see what the Deviant Moon says we should be noticing or we should look to see the light from this. The moon is always about mysteries in a way. This is something that we can't pierce unless we realize somebody really tells us what's going on. And maybe it is. Because we have the, uh, the Ace of Cups. That's upright. I don't know, this is kind of perplexing to me a little bit here. I sort of feel it touches on that Six of Cups. Could this be about people needing to free themselves from something that holds them to the past that now has moved into maybe a sense of memory and illusion that is crippling us? And that what the Ace of Cups is telling us is that we need to begin loving again. We need to find love and joy in our lives. That's the Ace of Cups. We need to move beyond whatever is holding us to the past or holding us to the idea of can't do, you know, something that cripples us so much. So how do we actually do that? How do we find that? I'll tell you how. We ask the goddess Hecate with my new oracle of the Hecatean path. So we are looking for advice now on what it is we really need to do to pull ourselves out of an illusion that cripples us with memories that no longer are, are the memories are true, but maybe they, they hold us in, a, in an obligatory way that prevent our hearts from moving on. And here it is. Three, Enodia. Enodia of the crossroads. That's very Hecate. Choices. Number three. Good number. Hecate's association with crossroads 
goes back to antiquity. She has watched as you approached and looks off along possible routes, knowing and seeing that which we do not. Dare you venture down the road less traveled? Hecate makes no choice on your behalf, urging you to trust in yourself. There is no right or wrong, but if you seek direction, then Hecate may hint at the best course of action. There is no turning back, only forward motion. I don't know about you, but I think it does kind of fit into what we're talking about here. We may find ourselves in terms of our emotionality, specifically not about love necessarily, but about our connection to others, our connection to others all around us, all walks of life, our family, our connection. We maybe are suffering from an illusion that's being foisted on us in different ways, mostly by the society and the culture that makes us feel trapped, that makes us feel like we have to obey or not stretch the rules of convention by giving in to who and what they say we should love or cherish or be about. We are all at this crossroads right now, and Hecate or whatever says we need to trust in ourselves. You are the best guide of yourself. Yeah, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a judge. I'm not a forensic expert. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a nutritionist. But I know my feelings as you know yours. All right, everybody. Until next week, please please continue to probe and shatter the illusions of culture or of whatever you want to call it that has been dominating our lives. We need to break free of the illusions. So mode it be. See you next time on Goth Tarot.